Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be building another H brace and answering the question, how I keep my saddles lined up, directly lined up with one another on horizontal rails when it comes to H braces or fence in general. For a more short, direct answer to some of these tips and tricks when it comes to fence, check us out on TikTok. We are striving to be more active over there on TikTok to simply answer questions like this here that we get all the time. You can get there the quickest by scanning this barcode. That'll take you directly to our page. We're also gonna be taking a closer look at the firefighting rig that I've got set up to wet down the area before I start cutting and welding, but also just to have on hand in case something gets out of hand. Okay, it's the next day. This is the third brace that we got done yesterday, and I'm fixing to start on the brace on the other side of the pond. I didn't film building this one because I, I had some issues with my machine had a little hose it was leaking and i've got that fixed and i've come back and i hurried up, hurried up and just built this one uh, but i wanted to come down here and look at it again because yesterday our water rig which is a stock trailer we'll check that out here in a minute my brother-in-law hooked me up with a water pump and the stock trailer to drag around for wetting down the area before we start welding try not to catch all this dry grass on fire so anyway the stock trailer was sitting right here so i didn't have that vantage point to look at whenever I was eyeballing my string line. That's the first thing I do whenever I build a brace, fence, anything. Literally, I, I run a, a, a string line on the top to get my top, and then I pretty much work from the top down, usually. So anyway, I wanted to come down here and check it out, and I'm just gonna kinda fill you in on what I kinda normally do. So I didn't think about it yesterday, but whenever I picked up the camera today and was gonna fill you in on how things were going on this little project. And I got to thinking I never did pull a tape measure out to mark my tops of my post, if you will. Like I didn't measure from the ground. And that was kind of odd for me because usually, like whenever I'm building like fence, like in general, I usually pull a rough measurement on each end and then I run a string line. But on these braces, I didn't do that. I'm not sure why. I kind of like to say that I build fence or build braces kind of like the pioneers or the the caveman or, or whatever I, I use my eyeball a lot and my body to measure so maybe like an egyptian old school that's the word i was looking for i feel like it's kind of an old school thing to use your body to measure let me know in the comments if you've ever used your body to measure for some type of project or for your work whether that's your arm span your height your steps that you take whatever that looks like let me know in the comments if you've ever done such a thing. So anyway, I got to thinking whenever I built these three braces yesterday, I was like, what did I do? And all I did was I walked up to my brace with a string line, had a tape on my hip, but I didn't pull a tape. I just walked up to the, the post, which the post was not cut off like it is now. It was taller. I just walked up to it and I put the string line on roughly chin height and I'm about five nine. So whatever, five nine minus the height of my head is that's roughly what i what i did here and you can see maybe a little lower but you you can't never tell because the ground isn't always the same so all that to say i use my body to measure i didn't use a tape i just put the string line on and then i just adjust it according to the ground and according to you know how the fence is going to be pulled off of it because i tr i do try to uh, i'm not going to be uh, stretching the fence on these braces the landowner is going to do that but whenever i put a brace in i want to do my best to keep the wires parallel with the braces so that's where the eyeballing comes in on a brace anyway i just wanted to kind of fill you in on what i do to start an h brace i've got my string line thrown up on this one it's in the sh same shape as the brace down yonder that we just looked at it's kind of kicked up just a touch but not much and i've looked at it from all the angles from there from up here by our water rig so yeah i've kind of looked at it from here and i think i think i'm gonna go with it where it's at all right now let's go check out our water rig a little closer here so we got a tote Got the lid taken off because we've got a suction hose here coming into the suction part of the pump. Then we've got a reducer down to a water hose situation on the uh, exit exit area. And uh, for those of you who may not know, 
The main deal with any kind of water pump is you don't want to run it empty. You always want to have uh, water in it. So right now our valve's off. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn that valve on, let that suction hose fill up with water, get some water back in the pump because I drained it last night because it got cold. And I've got my end open down there. That way water has somewhere to go. Then I'm going to fire it up and then uh, turn the speed up. See, we've got turtle and rabbit. Turn the speed up a little bit. And then I'm going to go to spraying some water, mostly downwind, but really all over where I'm going to be cutting. And the wind's kind of blowing this way and kind of back towards me today. Yesterday it was the opposite. But anyway, I'm just wet down the area all real good. And then that way, peace of mind whenever I go to use the old cutting torch. All right, so how do I keep my saddles directly lined up with one another? So they actually make a tool called a center finder and you can use that, but on fence, I normally find it faster and easier to just eyeball it. Sometimes I use a template, sometimes I don't, but the most accurate way is to use a template and I just cut one end of my saddle and I roll the pipe. I get over the top of it on the end, pretending this is a real saddle that I just cut. I get over the top of it and I roll the piece of pipe until it looks like it's straight up and down. I try my best to get directly on top of it to use that old eyeball to make sure it's lined up. I pull my measurement and I go to the other end and if I'm using a template, I just lay my template right over the top and I put this, this template is cut in half and I just put where it's divided at right on top. I roll it till it's right on top and then I mark it. If I'm just eyeballing it, I'll just lean over the pipe Either way, I lean over it. I get, I try to get to what feels like center of the pipe on top, and then I'll just take my soapstone and make a little mark. And then go ahead and freehand my cut. It's that easy. That's literally what I do to line up my saddles. to the next brace. My advice for this week is repetitiveness is key. When it comes to lining up your saddles on fence, 
just doing it more and more and more. The more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you will get at it, especially if you are trying to get better. The more you do it, the more you practice, the better your saddles will get at being lined up. Some might argue this point, but I personally believe that there is no such thing as mastering something. I believe there's always room for improvement. You just have to be open-minded enough to accept that there is a better way or there might be a faster way or there is a new tool that makes things better or whatever that looks like. You have to be open-minded enough to accept that. And I'm not saying I'm perfect because like I said earlier, old school, that kind of describes half of what old A-Ross welding is. I, people give me a hard time for not using a flux core machine, for not using a plasma, this, that, and the other. That's because I'm kind of old school and stuck in my ways. So I am a walking testimony to being hard-headed and not open-minded. So, and that it has its benefits also, you know I mean? You get, you get better at using a torch whenever that's all you use all the time. So it's not terrible, but I do encourage you to be open-minded and try to get better. Ultimately, just be you, be unique, and as long as you're learning something every day, you will be growing in one form or fashion. Whether that's trying a new tool or getting better at the old school tool, there's always room for improvement. If you're new around here, check out my website, arosswelding.com for more helpful information and check out our shop website. We've got the circle burner, welding shirt, soapstone, and a few more things over there in the Aros Welding store. If something is out of stock in the store, you can always text the word SHOP to 405-643-7176 and we will shoot you a text whenever said item is back in stock or with any updates or new items that come to the Aros Welding shop. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for all your support. And remember, learn something every day.